For every beloved hero, there's a villain that's waiting to stand in their way, and an audience that will cling desperately to watch the battle between good and evil unfold. Though as storytelling has progressed, we've seen a shift in how exactly this classic tale is represented. Most often, villains are used to represent the opposite of a society's ideals, and serve as the antithesis to the hero who embodies them. But a well-written villain can have you questioning whose side you should be supporting. Maybe those ideals are flawed in some way. It's pretty clear that what some villains do feels truly unforgivable but they show us a side of ourselves that we'd rather not acknowledge. If you were pushed that far, could you have walked down that same path? So that's why in this video, I've made the villain spectrum to explain every villain ever, probably. As another aspect, if you compare this to the hero spectrum I created, they will match up with their villain according to their slot. Mind you, not every villain and hero combo you think of will match perfectly, but this shows the most common pairings. The axes I use this time is based on level of power versus influence of fate. Starting with the vertical axis, power is a villain's ability to control those around them, their physical or magical prowess, and how much they rely on it to get things done. To the bottom are characters that don't use their power or don't need it in the same way higher villains do. Moving to the horizontal axis, influence of fate is how much will they exert over the things that happen to them. Villains to the left don't have to deal with destiny or fate telling them how exactly their demise will play out. So their stories tend to be more varied. And to the right are those who have an inescapable defeat waiting at the hands of their hero. As we go through each type and I list examples, consider that many villains have different iterations, writers, and stories that can paint them in different lights. And they can overlap between multiple categories. Starting in the top right corner, we have the Nemesis. This is the faded battle at the end of several books or a movie saga. The mastermind behind all the twists and turns the heroes had coming their way. The Nemesis is well regarded as the strongest, most conniving villain the hero faces. That being said, their role as the big bad evil guy at the end of a story pretty much tells you how that works out for them. Spoiler alert, they probably die. This faded battle, while cathartic, can feel lackluster in some ways to know that they're going to lose for sure. But if faced properly, and given the right buildup, there's no wonder why this one is as popular as it is. Examples include Ganondorf, Vilgax, and Gruntilda. Next is the dragon. This category may have you believe that this villain type is always some sort of monster or beast. And while this can be true, it's a bit more nuanced. This slot represents a colossal fight the hero must face, typically from a being that acts based off of its nature. There may or may not be some prophecy to defeat this villain, but this behemoth will give the hero a challenge unlike any they will face. This includes dragons, large beasts like whales, alien invasions, AI takeover, even mother nature herself, or another human-like threat that is working for the nemesis. These in particular are the most dangerous to face. This threat is so monumental that even a victory against this type will definitely earn you a few casualties or massive property damage. Examples include Darth Vader, Jaws, and Eternatus. To the left, we have the Equal. This is the villain who has all the powers of the hero, but they don't have some code of honor to follow, and they don't pull their punches. This type is incredibly dangerous as they give us a glimpse into how lucky we are that our heroes didn't go down the dark side. To defeat these villains, the heroes will usually have to rely on something outside of their power set, like their wits, to show that their powers aren't the only thing that make them super. Examples include General Zod, Goku Black, and Dark Samus. Back to the right is the Opposer. This villain acts as a contrarian to our hero. They benefit from the status quo and their current position within it. Maybe they're the advisor or chancellor to the king or ruling monarch. Think of them as the nemesis with far less direct power or control over the situations they're in. They're cunning, but just like the nemesis, with one wrong move, they can have everything they've been plotted thwarted by the hero and be cast away. Examples include Jafar, Grubba, and Longfang. To the left is the bully. This is a villain that is more true to life. These types are despicable and seem to be jerks for the thrill of it. They bask in schadenfreude and wish that your day would be worse. In some stories, these villains are allowed to open up and escape their confines to see that in some cases, they're hurting similar to the hero. But instead of stopping the cycle of pain, they continue it willingly. While not everyone has had a mortal nemesis, it's a lot more likely that you've seen or experienced someone being bullied. The hard part of dealing with this villain is that you can try to ignore them or show them a taste of their own medicine, but both of those solutions might not feel very satisfying in the end. Examples include Flash Thompson, Bakugo, and Regina George. Far left is the inner demon. This is typically the intangible aspect of ourselves that we have to face. Maybe we have grown passive and can no longer take action. Sometimes this manifests within our own mind and is something we have to battle internally. And other times, it has combined itself into others around us. This warping of reality leaves us unsure of what exactly is occurring. And that allows this villain to show us what we truly fear. And if we refuse to face it, it will destroy us from the inside out. Examples include White Zangetsu, Lily from Black Swan, and Medea of Persona 3. To the bottom right corner is the Trickster. This is the stereotypical agent of chaos. They are a force of nature, acting in the interest of whatever is the most entertaining to them. If someone gets hurt, 
Who cares? It's all a game to them anyways. While the tragic hero is playing against fate that they ultimately lose to, the trickster embodies the role and lives up to it fully. This can make them extremely dangerous and that they only need to push a few dominoes to cause massive destruction. Examples include Joker, Loki, and Bill Cipher. To the left is the false idol. This can be thought of as the hero to a villain, someone who misguides others to a path that is warped in some way. This could be someone who pretends to be a hero but extorts their followers, or someone who speaks about loving everyone but routinely beats naysayers into submission. This villain can sound close to the idea of a stereotypical cult leader or a corrupt politician, and it's no wonder why this type frightens us so much. Who is to say that you don't follow a false idol of some sort? Those parasocial relationships on social media can have you supporting someone who may not be who you think they are. Now that topic might be outside the scope of this video, but it does show us why we're fascinated with the concept of someone that is a hero, but not our hero. Examples include All for One, Makima, and Captain Quark. Finally, we have the sympathetic villain. This is commonly what happens to heroes who have lost their way. You can also think of these as anti-villains. If an anti-hero is showing the hero's shadow, the sympathetic villain attempts to show the villain's light. We see this in explorations of this type of villain's backstory, which lets the audience see what led them to this conclusion. Maybe no one was there for them. Nobody stopped to see if they were okay, and that anguish and isolation corrupted them. Or maybe they were led astray by a false idol, who skewed their beliefs but not their inner heroic virtue. Though it's not all doom and gloom, these villains can still be redeemed, even if they can't see it themselves. Or if they still desire the power they once had as a villain, they'll find that being a hero can lead them to true power. Examples include Zuko, Vegeta, and Shadow the Hedgehog. So after looking at all of these villains, what exactly does that tell us about the reasons we like them? As said before, these villains provide depth to the conversation from earlier. They let us ask difficult questions about what we should believe, or if what we care about as a society really matters in the end. When I described all of the categories, did any of them remind you of examples of your favorite villain? Maybe you enjoy the classic Saturday morning nemesis, or you're looking for a more nuanced battle between ideologies, like with the sympathetic. Regardless of what you prefer, when we talk about villains, we speak about the shadows we all possess. And maybe if we have more discussions about them, we can learn to treat each other a little better and question the society we live in. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.